Hi everyone, I just want to say before we begin that you may want to watch this video more than once. And the reason I say that is because so many that have watched this presentation have told me that they got more out of it the second time. You know, I think it's because it's a different way of looking at what we thought we already knew. And it makes you think. And when we think, we discover. And discovery is the best way to learn. So watch it the first time all the way through. And then when you watch it the second time, you'll see that the answers to the questions are in there. You just didn't know to ask them the first time. So let's begin. There are only four possible failures that can take place in an electrical system. Only four. Only four. Did I say only four? In this video, I'm going to explain those four possible failures and show you how to test for them. In other words, how to eliminate all the clutter and focus on the problem. But first, you'll probably agree that electrical issues can be very frustrating. And truth be told, most techs don't like them at all. But some techs seem to just breeze right through them and focus on the problem. So what do those techs do? Well, it's like getting from point A to point B. Let's call point A the problem and point B the solution. Now, sometimes it seems like there's a big cluttered up mess and it might be more work than it's worth. But wouldn't it be nice if we could make it as simple as possible, just a straight line? So that's what those texts do. They eliminate the clutter and then they can focus on the problem. So instead of seeing all of that clutter that's in our way, let's focus on the basic electrical theory. Electricity always works the same way, no matter how complex or how much clutter there seems to be. It always works the same way. It always works the same way. Did I say always? In the real world of car repair, there will always be electrical problems. But our goal is to understand how electricity works in the automotive environment and diagnose the problems. Well, first we have to look at some basics. If you're watching this video, you're either new to this or you've been doing it for a long time. But either way, I'm probably going to say some things differently here than you've heard before. So put on your thinking cap, open your mind, and see if this doesn't help you become better at solving electrical issues. Now I'm not going to start talking by volts, ohms, and amps. Instead, I'm going to start by teaching about gravity. Now you know that gravity is perfect. Every leaf on every tree falls down, and every raindrop falls down every time. It's just simply a law of science, right? Gravity is perfect. It never fails. It never doesn't work. It never goes the wrong way. And it always does exactly what it is supposed to do every time. So you might call it perfectly predictable. So it's simply gravity is a law of science. And it simply makes sense. Now remember, you can't see gravity, but it's still there. I'm going to show you some things that you were looking right at but didn't even know you were seeing. Electricity is perfect. It never fails. It never doesn't work. It never goes the wrong way. And it always does exactly what it is supposed to do every time. So we could also say that it is perfectly predictable. Now if gravity is so simple, why is electricity so confusing? So what do I mean by it never fails? If electricity is given a conductive path to ground, it will take it every time, period. Now what do I mean by that it never makes a mistake? There is no decision process involved. There's no logic. There's no calculation. Electricity never takes the wrong path. It always takes the path of least resistance. So what do I mean by it is never wrong? Well, if you're looking for electricity and it's not where you think it should be, I can guarantee that it's not electricity that's wrong, it's you who are wrong, or how or where you're looking for it. Now, what do I mean by it is perfectly predictable? You don't have to guess or wonder. If it is supposed to be there and or not supposed to be there, you can count on it. The rule of law means that if you break a law, you face the consequences. 
Confusion, also known as clutter, is those consequences. It's a law of science, and we call that Ohm's law, current voltage and resistance. You just need to learn to trust it. Now, let's talk about volts, ohms, and amps. But I'm going to change the words. I'm going to change volts to pressure, ohms to work, and amps to flow. Now, we know this. In a wire, we'll draw the wire here, you have voltage, and that voltage pushes amps through the wire. And volts are the applying the pressure, the amps are what flow through the wire, and resistance opposes that pressure, or opposes the per push, and that enables the load to work. When something works, there is no complaint. If the problem or failure with the work brings a complaint, that's where we should focus. Now let's talk about that conductive path. A conductive path means current can flow through it, or electricity. So continuity is very important. What does continuity mean? Well, whatever comes to it passes right through it. If power comes to it, power will pass right through it. If ground comes to it, ground will pass right through it. And if nothing comes to it, nothing will pass right through it. So with continuity, nothing is something. Sometimes doing nothing is doing something very important. Now remember, you may have a problem with the power, or you may have a problem with the ground, but you also may have a problem with nothing. Now here's a warning. This next part is going to be kind of confusing, so pay close attention. How does voltage travel? Pause the video and think about that for a moment. How does voltage travel? It doesn't. It pushes current. Voltage is always looking for ground, and it pushes the current to a conductive path. And when ground is at that load, the voltage finds it and the load works. Next question, how does ground travel? Pause it and think about that now for a second. How does ground travel? Well, ground doesn't travel either. Ground is simply a return path for the traveling current. Ground is not looking for anything. It simply provides a conductive path. And it doesn't care if voltage is there or not. If there is a conductive path, ground will be there. If there is not a conductive path, ground will not be there. Now you may be asking then, what do you mean voltage and ground don't travel? Well, let's go back to our illustration of gravity, which we know is perfect. Gravity doesn't travel, but yet it is still there. Power and ground don't travel either, and yet they still have an effect. Current is what travels. From now on, I'm going to refer to electricity as power to stay consistent with our common terminology. Power is always seeking ground, and it will take it at the first place it finds it, right or wrong. It never comes in second. Now, for any load to work, there must be current flowing through it, right? There are only two things that can change that current flow in an automotive circuit. What are they? Voltage going up or down will change it, or resistance going up or down will change it. These are the two things that can change that flow, either the changing in the push, the voltage, or the change in the resistance. So voltage going up or down, the push going up or down, will have a direct effect on the flow. And the resistance also will have a direct effect on how much flow can be pushed. So instead of seeing all that clutter, let's focus on the basic electrical theory, and that's really pretty simple. Remove the clutter.